there and welcome to VCD Rack 2. This is a video explaining this beginning template patch that shows up uh, once you open up VCD Rack uh, to get you off the ground uh, moving and making noises with VCD Rack exploring modular synthesis. Uh, if you get to the end of this and are still um, uh, wanting to go deeper or uh, uh, confused about some of the things that are going on here, I've got some other resources I can send you on towards uh, at the end of this video. But let's get started in, uh, in doing stuff with VCD back here. The first thing you're going to need to take care of is uh, this audio module here. Um, is you have to tell it where your speakers are. So uh, just choose your main speakers uh, in here. I'm using this Focusrite audio thing, but um, whatever, you may have more or less uh, options than me, but uh, choose your speakers, uh, and now we should uh, begin to have sound. This MIDI to CV is where we're going to be controlling this because this is going to work like a big um, electronic instrument, kind of like a piano style instrument where I press the keys and it plays them. Um, it comes ready to go with your QWERTY keyboard. Um, so if I push notes in my Z row or in my Q row, those are like the white keys of a piano and you can play right away. If you would like, if you have a, uh, a MIDI keyboard, um, an, an, another MIDI keyboard that you have plugged into your computer, you can as well choose that uh, by going to MIDI and choosing it. This is my... Sound-wise, it is not going to be any different. I'm just going to go ahead and switch back over here to my QWERTY keyboard um, because that's uh, what many of you guys might be using as well. So coming, uh, uh, so we've got our sound. We've got uh, things happening. We can see our sound waves here. We can hear them in our ears. Let's talk about the big picture of what's happening. Then we'll walk through uh, the, the individual oscillators um, as, as, as we come back to the beginning. So starting us off, we are coming out of this MIDI module here is it's telling what note we are playing. These yellow cables are sending pitch information uh, to our different sound makers. And these red cables are sending out gates, basically an on off switch of am I pushing a button or not um, is, what, is what these gates are coming out of here. So those pitch informations, let's follow those first. The pitch information is coming down to three different oscillators. The oscillators are the things that are uh, sending voltage that's oscillating back and forth really quickly and end up basically being our sound sources. So these three right here that we'll talk about in a little bit are making our sound waves. And then they're getting sent out these blue cables. Uh, blue represents audio in this initial template patch. Those are being sent over here to this VCA mixer. So this mixer here is functioning just like a standard mixer in music where I control the volume of each of these different voices. I've got my three oscillators and then also uh, some white noise here um, that we'll talk about in a little bit. But what makes this interesting is the volume of everything is being controlled right here by this green cable. So all three, all four of my sound sources are coming into this mix, but then the overall volume of everything is being controlled by this green cable. So let's see where that comes from. So this, this green cable is coming right over here from this module called ADSR. That stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. So this makes an envelope uh, if you want to zoom in on yours, you can push control or command and uh, scroll wheel uh, to zoom in. Um, this is one that in the new version of VCV Rack, I'm a little annoyed by how hard it is to see uh, these knobs, but I'll get used to it. Um, so this is being sent, this red cable, if you remember, is being sent an on-off switch, basically, uh, that is coming from my keys. Am I pushing a button? I can also just push this button right here to make it happen. Uh, but I need that one to happen as well, so it doesn't. We don't hear anything yet with that. Um, but my keyboard pushes both of these at once, and I'll talk about this guy in a second. So this one right here is controlling the volume of all four of these sounds. After they get mixed together, this guy's controlling the volume of it all. The attack is how long does it take to get up to full volume? A long time to fade in, or does it immediately go up to full volume? 
-hmm. and I'm using volume right now um, because that's what this envelope is controlling. But this little one shot wave is what an envelope is basically could be sent to any different parameter um, as we'll see in a second with this other ADSR. Let's give it a little bit of a slower attack. So it's not as harsh there. Decay, uh, let's talk about sustain first actually. Let's skip over decay for a second. The sustain is how loud does it stay while I'm holding down the key. If it's all the way up, the, it stays at full volume while I'm holding down my key. If it goes all the way down to zero, uh, it while I'm still holding my key, it fades all the way back down to zero. So that volume goes all the way away once my decay ends. So let's leave the sustain down because it lets us hear the decay easier. It, decay is just how long does it take to get to the sustain level really quickly and you can hardly hear it or really long and it it's just barely getting quieter as it goes on. Let's get it reset to back vaguely where it was. Something like this. So uh, again, getting my gate from my keyboard. This envelope is controlling the volume of all of my sounds that have been mixed together. So then that goes out of my mixer and into my VCF, voltage controlled filter. So a filter is a uh, going to let out either all of the only the high notes or rather frequencies or only the low frequencies we have it currently plugged into the low pass filter output so only the sounds below my cutoff point are going to come through <laughs> VCV Act does a great job. Just click and drag on the knobs and you're changing that output. So you're changing the, that parameter. So this is letting through all, all of the frequencies below where my arrow is basically. But I can control that with not just my hand. I can control that with something else like this other ADSR that's set to slightly different settings. It can be just very slight or very drastic different settings. So my keyboard, again, telling this I am pushing a key. So it kicks off this one time envelope that is now controlling the cutoff of this. So basically what this is doing is when I push a key, it's doing this and bringing it back down automatically for me. How quick is the attack? How slow, how quick is the decay? Where's the sustain? And then how long does it take to get back to its baseline point? So, if I make the attack slow, it takes a while for that filter to open, or I can bring it back to where it was. get that kind of wah sound with a longer attack. And then this little knob here is a really important one as well. This is an attenuator or attenuverter actually um, that will take this envelope and tell it how much is it going to affect this cutoff point. So if I only let it cut off, affect it a little bit, it's not going to change much. Let me bring it up a little bit so you can hear it a little. It just barely bumps it up a little bit. So as it was, it was like this. Resonance on a uh, on a filter is a basically a bump right uh, uh in, right next to where it's starting to cut stuff off cutting off the high frequencies to only let low the through through the low in this case um, right next to that it's going to bump up the sound a little bit to give this neat resonant sound so Feel free to mess around with knobs as as we're as you're going through and exploring this. So out of the filter, into the ears.
that's the kind of final part in our big loop. It's also going to this scope just so you can see what's happening because that's always fun. Let's go a little deeper now. Um, so we, I said we have three different voices here. These are the, the heart of the sound. This is the VCO, the voltage controlled oscillator. This is what's making the frequencies that are fast enough for your ears to hear them. Um, it's getting its pitch information, which is this volt per octave. That means every volt uh, from, if, if zero volts are sent in, it's going to play this note here. If one volt is sent in here, it's going to play an octave higher than that. So um, that's the standard for, uh, that's the standard for um, pitch information here. So we've got our VCO. We can change our, our note. If I move it down here and then play, it's all going to be lower. Oh, hang on. I forgot one thing. Let's listen to just this one voice. Turn these other guys down on the mixer. So now the only one I have up is the one that's plugged into channel one, which is this guy right here. You can see where he's coming from right here. It's coming from the VCO sawtooth. So right over here. So that was a right click on the menu. So right. this is just this one voice. So that's my thing. If you double click on the knob, it goes back to standard, uh, to the, the default setting. I'm going to leave it there because these other ones need to be in tune with it um, for uh, for this patch at least. Um, so the, the main thing I want to look on this VCO is we've got four different outputs, four different shapes of waves that give us a slightly different sound. Um, so if I come over here to the sine wave, it's going to give us a nice smooth sound or a nice smooth wave rather. Triangle wave is going to be a little more pointy and give a little harsher of a sound. Again, you can hear that filter changing with this envelope here. It smooths everything out a little bit as it cuts out the higher frequencies. The sawtooth, a little more pointy still. It ramps up and then drops quickly. And then the square wave. That's really ramping up quick and cutting down quick to give the harshest of the high frequencies. So uh, let's bring this guy back to the sawtooth wave and uh, move on to our next oscillator. Turn down the volume of the first one, bring this guy up. This next one is, oh wait, I, need, I forgot to mention one thing about this guy. Uh, let's bring this back over to sawtooth or square wave. There's one more knob here, the pulse width. On the square wave, if I turn this this way, you can see now it's a short high followed by a long low. If I go the other way, it's a long high versus a short low. Just a neat little uh, way to change the sound of a square wave. The reason why that's important to know before we move on to oscillator two is because the only difference with oscillator two, there's only two small differences. First of all, the pitch information first gets dropped an octave by this little tiny module that just moves it by octaves, takes whatever's coming in and then changes it by an octave. <laughs> Leave it at one down. So the other thing that's happening here is that um, we have one more thing plugged into this VCO. So we've got our pitch information, we've got this green cable that we'll talk about at the end, and then one more green cable coming from this guy, our LFO. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. It looks the same as these VCOs because pretty much it is the same with the exception that its main frequencies are much slower and you can't uh, so so slow that we don't really hear them uh, normally so here's that pitch coming from the LFO you'll notice it's uh, it looks very fast but lo let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole wave you can see this triangle wave happening from this LFO but compared to the sound waves you see the sound waves are happening much faster so this low frequency oscillator is plugged into the PWM, the pulse width modulation. So just like I was wiggling this knob over here, this LFO, as it goes up and down, uh, will, will do that wobbling for me. It will, it will turn this knob for me. 
So if we take a look at what it's doing to the square wave, you can see it wiggling automatically because this LFO is uh, basically turning this knob back and forth for us. And again, just like we had um, with uh, this uh, cutoff uh, attenuverter, we can make it do it more or less or even do it backwards than the LFO would normally tell it to. And we can make it happen slower by turning down the LFO or even faster, even faster to the point where it ends up, the LFO ends up being in audio range and we get some strange things that can happen. starting to play. Let's put this stuff back to where it normally was. So that's our second oscillator right here. Let's turn him down and bring up our third oscillator, which is different. Um, and this is a, a new a, a new looking one and I like the feel of this one in VCO or in, in VCV rack 2 um, because this one has uh, just a neater look to it. Again, uh, my pitch information being dropped two octaves this time with another one of these octave modules sent into the VCO. But now this one is a wavetable VCO, which means instead of having different outputs for the different wave shapes, we've got this knob that lets us slide smoothly between the different shapes of waves. So all the way over here, and it's going to sound like a sine wave. Again, really low because I dropped it two octaves. Turn this all the way over to here, and now I've got a square wave. So, and just like uh, other things, like uh, over here, I could, if I wanted to, um, take my LFO, uh, actually, let's do it this way. I can take this LFO, the same thing that's changing my pulse width modulation over here. I could take that, control click or command click and get another cable from that same spot. And I could make it change what wave I'm on. Going like this. Gives an interesting sound. I'll leave it out for right now because that's kind of our base uh, voice. Let's bring it back to the triangle wave that it, it, it started with and uh, bring our voices back in. Oh, wait, we got to talk about our white noise. I'm pushing different keys. You're not hearing a change in pitch, though, because it's all just white noise. It's just hissing. Any change in pitch is a, 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 an artifact of the filter resonance. If I turn that up, you can kind of hear the pshh. That's from the resonance uh, being uh, marked as, as this guy is turning the cutoff knob down, basically. So this is just white noise. Just a little bit of it in the mix can be kind of cool. So let's get these guys back to where they were, basically. There's one final thing we can talk about here, and that's what this LFO is also set up to do. This LFO is also plugged into, um, through the sine wave output, into this VCA that really seems like you can't get it to do much. Um, but what it is set up to do is use the mod wheel. Now, a QWERTY keyboard doesn't have a mod wheel. If I switched over to one of my uh, regular keyboard, uh, piano keyboards, that I could, I could use the mod wheel to open and close this. Let me show you that really quickly. Um, if I switch onto my keyboard, now if I slide up on my mod wheel, it opens up this VCA. A VCA is like we had over here, um, with this envelope controlling the volume of it. A VCA is basically that same thing, voltage-controlled amplifier or voltage-controlled attenuator, um, whichever you want to call it. It takes the input volume, which is this LFO, and it changes how much of it gets sent out, either very little or the full strength of the signal. So if, you, uh, if we listen to this now... Um, <laughs> that's being sent is this LFO is now being sent out to three spots, all three of our oscillators. It's being sent to the FM spot. FM stands for frequency modulation. So now it's actually changing the, the, the main pitch of the note 
not enough to be a whole new note like going into the volts per octave, but just a little bit. It's only 5% turned up here on each of these, uh, on all those. So if I change one of them here, it's gonna sound pretty crazy because now this one's gonna modulate more than the others. But if I wanna bring it back to where it needs to be, I right click and I go five. And now it's gonna be back to 5%. And if I want it to do more, I can use my modulation wheel to bring this guy up and now it's gonna do that a whole lot more. It's gonna be kind of crazy now, but if I bring it down to just a little bit, I can fade it in and out with my modulation wheel. So how can you do that if you don't have a keyboard? Uh, well, the main way you can do it is by um, getting rid of this cable. Ta-da! Now, if I got rid of that, and I no longer have anything plugged into this control voltage input of this, and now I can just use my mouse to control how much of this LFO gets sent to these FM plugs. So if it's just a little bit. If I turn this all the way up, it's actually like enough to be changing the notes pretty drastically. But if I just pull it up a little bit, it gives a little bit of a vibrato that I can bring in and out. So again, the way I did that is I just removed the, there was a green cable right here. Oh, I guess I can, I can do it with right click and make it green. 50. That's a new thing in VCV Rack. So, um, and then I open that, fold this out. So if you have a modulation wheel, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just delete that cable, right click, delete top cable, or drag the cable and just let go of it somewhere not important. And then uh, you've got this, uh, this volume controller, basically, which isn't controlling volume of sound, but it's controlling how much of this sine wave is being sent out to these uh, FM inputs. So that's all of what you've got going on. You've got uh, uh, pitches that you can change between the oscillators, tune them differently. You've got ADSRs you can play with uh, to control the volume of the notes and the filter cutoff. You can mess with the filter cutoff. You can mess with how much the LFO is. You can plug different things into different places and see what happens um, and explore. So um, if you... Uh, have messed with this and you either want to learn more or are still thoroughly confused by everything that's going on, um, there's some links down in the description uh, to um, a playlist by Amrit Cohen, who has walked through a lot of this in great detail on all these different parts. Um, uh, the idea to make this video came from him uh, in that he made a video like this for the old version of VCV Rack. Um, but this this default patch setup is much more complicated in VCV Rack 2, so I didn't want people to be floundering around um, unsure of what all this mess means. The other uh, video I would suggest is the video that got me into uh, modular synthesis is the uh, video by Andrew Huang uh, describing uh, modular synthesis and how it works, uh, all the different little parts. So um, I'll have those linked in the description uh, if you want to check those out. Otherwise, uh, let me know if you have any questions.